for today, we'll be discussing how to create GUI screens with NetBeans. So this is our Java lesson 3B. So getting started. The ID is GUI Builder makes it possible to build professional looking GUIs without an intimate understanding of layout managers. So this is the advantage of using the GUI Builder. You can lay out your forms by simply placing components where you want them. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a GUI form using NetBeans IDE's GUI Builder. So first, how do we create a project? So to create a new contact editor application project, so we open our NetBeans, of course, and then we choose File, New Project. Alternately, you can click the New Project icon in the IDE toolbar. And then in the Categories pane, select the Java node, and in the Projects pane, choose Java Application. I will be showing you that later. Then enter Contact Editor in the Project Name field, and specify the project location, but we'll just use the default. Leave the use dedicated folder for storing libraries and set, uh, checkbox unselected. Ensure that the set as main project checkbox is selected and clear the create main class field. Then we click finish. Or here, we're just going to type also the uh, application name for our main class field. Then we click finish. So let's try to do that. I'll, show, I'll be showing you that using NetBeans. So I have here my NetBeans already open. So to create a project, can uh, click new project. And then here you have to choose Java with an. So in the in the slide it was on Java, but here we have Java with an, and then you choose Java application on the project page. And after that we just click next. So here. Uh, what's the name again? Contact Editor. So we'll be using Contact Editor as our project name. So we'll, I'll be placing here Contact Editor. And then here, I'll just also type Contact Editor. Or you can just clear that. Okay, so I'll just leave this by default. And then I'll just click finish. So that's the first slide. So with that, I already have my main program. Uh, I'll be closing other uh, applications here. So that's my main program. So that's the first slide. So we click finish. So let's proceed. Then create a JFrame container. To add a JFrame container in the projects window, we right-click the contact editor node and choose new JFrame form. Alternatively, you can find a JFrame form by choosing new other swing wave forms and JFrame form, but we'll be using the first one. So right-click and then uh, new, then JFrame form. And then we enter contact editor UI as our class name. Enter my contact editor as a package, so although we can just ignore that first. Then we click Finish. So the IDE creates a contact editor form and contact editor UI class within the contact editor UI Java application. And opens the contact editor UI form in the GUI builder. Notice that the my contact editor, so I'll just be ignoring the, the package first. So again, we bought, we're creating a JFrame form and we name it Contact Editor. So let's do that. So here, my Contact Editor, right click the Contact Editor, then New, and then be sure that you have JFrame form here, not the JPanel form, not this one, the JFrame form. So we click on the JFrame form, then the class name is contact editor UI I think that's the name am I right contact editor UI so that's it oh wait so contact editor UI uh, let's leave this one that's it I just click finish so although you can place it one if you want to just click finish 
So you notice here, I already have my contact editor UI Java. And I have here my uh, form. So let's proceed with the next slide. So getting familiar with the GUI builder. So these are the uh, parts of our GUI builder. And what are these parts? So the design area, the design area, the GUI builder's primary window for creating and editing Java GUI forms. The toolbar's source button, so here the source button enables you to view a class or source code. So we have source code or the design button. So we have here two buttons here. Allow you to view the graphical view of the GUI components. The history button allows you to access the local history of changes of the file. So the history button. The additional toolbar buttons provide convenient access to common commands such as choosing between selection and connection modes, aligning components, setting components, auto resizing behavior, and previewing forms. So these are the buttons here. So I'll be showing you that in our actual screen. So this is our uh, GUI or design area. So we have your source. If you click on source, it will show us the source code. If you click on design, it will show us the design. History, it will show some history. So what are the things that we have done for this uh, form? And then we have here some for selection, for preview, for connection mode and alignment and resizing. So these are the icons that we can find in our design area. So let's proceed with the next slide. The navigator. So this will, this is our navigator. The navigator provides a representation of all the components, both visual and non-visual, in your application as a tree hierarchy. The navigator also provides visual feedback about what component in the tree is currently being edited in the GUI builder, as well as allows you to organize components in the available panels. So these are the panels. So again, uh, important uh, one thing that is important here is you will be able to know what is uh, what component in the tree is currently being edited. So, for example, if this one is highlighted, then that means that it is being uh, it is the component that is being edited. So, let's try to show that in the actual screen. So, this is our navigation pane. So, these are the components. So, if, if you notice here, in this component, we already have one J frame. And if I click on this, it may show the components, but that means it uh, doesn't have any component yet. So it's a three hierarchy, and this is our main project. You see to the next slide, the GUI builder's key components. So pre-design in the IDS GUI builder, you can build your forms by simply putting components where you want them as though you were using absolute positioning. The GUI builder figures out which, uh, which layout attributes are required and then generates a code for you automatically. So it generates a code. You need not concern yourself with insets, anchors, fields, and so forth. Automatic component positioning or snapping. As you add components to a form, the GUI builder provides visual feedback that assists in positioning components based on your operating system's look and feel. The GUI builder provides helpful inline hints and other visual feedback regarding where components should be placed on your form, automatically snapping components into position along guidelines. It makes these suggestions based on the positions of the components that have already been placed in the form, while allowing the padding to remain flexible such, such that different target look and feels render properly at one time. And the visual feedback. The GUI Builder also provides visual feedback regarding component anchoring and chaining relationships. These indicators enable you to quickly identify the various positioning relationships and component spinning behavior that affect the way your GUI will both appear and behave at one time. This speeds the GUI design process, enabling you to quickly create professional-looking visual interfaces that work. So the GUI Builder Palette and Properties window. So these are our Palette and Properties window. So the palette is a customizable list of available components. So that is one. 
containing tabs for JFC or swing, AWT, and Java Beans components, as well as layout managers. In addition, you can create, remove, and rearrange the categories displayed in the palette using the customizer. The properties window, so this part, displays the properties of the component that's currently selected in the GUI builder, navigator window, or projects window, or files window. If you click the source button, the IDE displays the application's Java source code in the editor with the sections of code that are automatically generated by the GUI builder, indicated by gray areas, so they become blue when selected, called guarded blocks. Guarded blocks are protected areas that are not editable in source view. You can only edit code appearing in the white areas of the editor when in source view. If you need to make changes to the code within the guarded block, clicking the design button returns the IDE's editor to the GUI builder where you can make the necessary adjustments to the form. When you save your changes, the IDE updates the file sources. So, again, this is our palette and this is our properties window pane. So you notice we have here the components and here we have the properties of whatever select, uh, is selected here. So we have selected the JFrame form, so it is selected. So what we see here is actually the properties of the JFrame form. So these are the properties. Adding components, the basic one. So, so to add the J panel in the palette window, select the panel component from the swing containers category by clicking and releasing the mouse button. So we click and then release. Move the cursor to the upper left corner of the form in the GUI builder. When the component is located near the container's top and left edges, horizontal and vertical alignment guidelines, so there will be guidelines that will appear. So appear indicating the preferred margins. Click in the form to place the J panel in this location. So we'll be doing that. So first, we locate for the J panel frame. So where is my J panel? I think no, this one is J panel. So just click here and release. Then you bring your mouse pointer here. You notice there are some guidelines there. So let's say that's my preferred top and left margin so i just click then that's it so i have now placed my j panel inside my uh, form so exactly what we have done this is uh, how it will appear So you notice here also that our panel is inside our J frame. So you notice of the hierarchy. So how to resize the J panel, select the J panel you just added, then the small square resize handles reappear around the component's perimeter. Click and hold the resize handle on the right edge of the panel to, and drag until the dotted alignment guidelines appear near the form's edge release the resize handle to resize the component. So let's do that. So let's say I'll, I'll just drag this to the right and that's it. So once that my uh, preferred margin appears, I can just release. And let's say I would like to increase it a little. Okay, so that's now my J-frame form. So that's how you resize. Just click. So there are handles here, or resize handles, then you can just drag the resize handles. Okay, so that's what we have done here. Adding and resizing J panel. Add another J panel below, and here is what will happen. So we have two panels here. So we're going to add another panel. So how do we add? Again, click. And then we just okay. so you notice uh, there are guidelines that we, uh, that we show to us. Yeah, so
So guidelines, I'll just click. And then I'll just resize also. I think that's it. Okay, so I have now two J panels. Adding titles and borders to J panel. Select the top J panel in the GUI builder and in the properties window, click the ellipsis button next to the border property. In the J panel border editor that appears, select the title border node in the available borders pane. In the properties pane below, enter name for the title property. Click the ellipsis next to the font property, select bold for the font style and then enter 12 for the size, then click OK to, to exit the dialogs. Select the bottom J panel, repeat steps 2 through 5, but this time right click the J panel and access the properties window using the pop up menu. Enter email for the title property. So we're going to do that. So here, click on the upper window pane then locate border so this is border and then we click now on the ellipsis button so this will appear and then here let's click title border and then click on title What's the title again? <laughs> I forgot the title. Name for the title. So let's type here name. And then for the font, we choose bold and 12. And then click OK. You can also change the color if you want. So I'll just click OK. So I have free now my frame. And then on the lower frame, so instead of doing that, it's, we can right click and then where is, is the variable properties? So we have border, then titled border, email, bold 12. Okay, and then click okay, close the property. So, these are two ways of uh, adding borders and or title border to our J panels. Okay, let's proceed. So, we have done that to add a J label to the form in the palette window, select the label component from the swing. Controls category. Move the cursor over the name J panel we added earlier. When the guidelines appear indicating that the J label is positioned in the top left corner of the J panel with a small margin at the top and at the left, click to place the label. So the J label is added to the form and a corresponding node representing the component is added to the inspector window. So let's try that. So label click and then bring label here so let's say that's the desired margin or if you want a bigger top margin so that's the margin then we just click so you notice here that the J label is inside panel To edit the display text of a J label, so we double click the J label to select its display text. Then type first name and press enter key. The J label's new name is displayed and the components width adjust as a result of the edit. So we do that. So we double click and then we type, what do we type? Mm, first name. Then so again, I'll do that. Double click, then type first name. Then press enter key. So I have now changed 
the display text. To add a JTEX field to the form in the palette window, select the text field component from the swing control category. Move the cursor immediately to the right of the first name J label we just added. When the horizontal guidelines appear indicating that the JTEX field baseline is aligned with that of the J label at the spacing between the two components is suggested with the vertical guideline, click to position the JTEX field. So we place the JTEX field beside the first name. So we look for a text field here. Where is our text field? This one is our text field. So we click, then we place it. You notice of the baseline, maybe that's the spacing I would like. So just click. So that's it. I have now placed my text field. So before proceeding further, we need to add an additional J label and J text field immediately to the right of those we just added as shown in the following illustration. This time, we enter last name as J label display and then little J text fields placeholder as text. It is for now. So we just add this too. Okay. So I'm going to add another label. So double click to change the display text, last name, and then I'm going to add, so I'll press enter key, I'm going to add a text field, so I think that's the spacing I use, so that's it, I have now added these two text fields. So next, resizing the component. To resize a JTEX field, select the JTEX field we add, just added to the right of the last name J label, then drag the JTEX field's right edge resize handle towards the right edge of the clo enclosing J panel. When the vertical alignment guidelines appear, suggesting the margin between the text field and the right edge of the J panel, release the mouse button to resize the JTEX field. Then the JTEX field right edge snaps into alignment with the J panel's recommended edge margin as shown in the following illustration. So this is what we're going to do. Okay, so we try that. So we just drag this until that part. Or we can we have a smaller margin. I think that will be okay. So that's it. We now have our, we now have resized our JTEX field. To add multiple J labels to the form, in the palette window, select the label component from the swing control category by clicking and releasing the button. Then move the cursor over the form directly below the first name we added earlier. When the guidelines appear indicating that the new J label's left edge is aligned with that of the J label above the small margin, small margin exists, then between them, shift click to place the first J label. So while press, pressing the shift key, Place another J label immediately to the right of the first. Make certain to release the shift key prior to the position to position the second J label. And then if you forget to release the shift key prior to positioning the label, simply press the escape key. So let's try that. So uh, J label is below. We press shift key. Then maybe another field here. So after that, we just press escape key. So we added two J labels. So just so if you want to press uh, place several items or similar items, you just press shift key. So at the end, you just press escape key. So J labels are added to the form, creating a new second row. As shown in the following illustration, nodes representing each component are added to the navigator window. 
So to edit the display text of the J labels, we double click the first J label and then we type title, press enter key. Repeat steps one and two, entering nickname for the J labels, saying the name property. So we have uh, title and Uh, nickname. Okay. Double click, title, enter, double click, nickname, enter. So that's it. So the J labels new names are displayed in the form and are shifted as a result of their edited width as shown in the following illustration. Inserting components to insert a JTEX field between the two labels, in the palette window select the text field components from the swing control category, move the cursor over the title and nickname. J labels on the second row such that the JTEX field overlaps both and is aligned to their baseline. If you encounter difficulty positioning the new text field, you can snap it to the left guideline of the nickname J label as shown in the first image below. So click to place a J text field between the title and the nickname label. So we place a J text field between uh, these two labels here. So text field, position it here. Then click. Oh, wait. Uh, I'll repeat that one. Should be Still going to their center. There. So at the center of both the street. So the JTEX field snaps into position between the two J labels, the rightmost J label, shift towards, so it should shift here. Okay, so that's what we have done. To add the JTEX field in the palette window, select the text field components from the swing category, move the cursor to the right of the nickname label and click to place the JTEX field. So we add a JTEX field. Then to resize, Drag the handler you had it in the previous task towards the right of the enclosing panel. So when the vertical alignment guidelines appear, suggesting the margins between the JTEX will so release. Then press Ctrl S to save the file. So we do that. We have another text field here and then resize until the edge. So Ctrl S to save the file. Okay, so, so far that's what we have done so far. So I did not read this uh, in detail because it's really the same with what we have previously done. Now to align components, hold down the control key and click to select the first name and title J labels on the left side of the form. Click align right in column button in the toolbar alternately you can right click either one and choose align right in column from the pop-up menu repeat this for last name and nickname J labels as well so the J labels position shift sets that the right edges of their display text are aligned the anchoring relationships are updated indicating that the components have been grouped so let's try that. Click, shift. Did it say? Did it say? Control click. So click and then control click, and then we have here align right. So let me. So click, control click, align right.
Okay. That's a component alignment. To set components resizability behavior, control click the two inserted JTEX build components to the select. To select them in the GUI builder. With both JTEX will selected, right click either one of them and choose auto resizing horizontal from the pop menu. The JTEX fields are set to resize horizontally at runtime. The alignment guidelines and anchoring indicator are updated, providing visual feedback of the component and relationship. So, JTEX field. Let's say click, right click this. So we have a right click. What was it saying? <laughs> Authorizing horizontal. So, authorizing horizontal from the pop-up menu. Oh. Horizontal. So the, the same is true with this, authorizing and then horizontal. Okay. So I have now changed authorizing horizontal. Actually, that's this one. To set components to be the same size, control click all of the four of the JTEX fields in the form to select them. With the JTEX field selected, right click any one of them and choose set same size, same width from the pop up menu. The JTEX fields are all set to the same width and indicators are added to the top edge of each, providing visual feedback to the component relationship. So, I have click, control click, control click, control click, then right click, same size, same width. So, that's it. I have it now, same width. Align a component to a component group. To align a J label to a component group in the palette window, select the, the label component from the swing category. Move the cursor below the first name. Uh, wait. Move the cursor below the first name and title J labels on the left side of the J panel. When the guidelines appear indicating that the new J labels right edge is aligned with the right edge of the component group above the two J labels, click to position the component. Label. So uh, there, you, you notice there's already right alignment. So we just release. To align the baseline of components in the palette window, select the combo box component from the swing control category. Move the cursor immediately to the right of the J label we just added. When the horizontal guideline appears indicating that the J combo box baseline is aligned with the baseline of the text, the J label, and the spacing between the two components is suggested with the vertical guideline, click to position the combo box. So we add the combo box. So this is the combo box, click. Then you notice the alignment, and we release. So be sure of the guidelines. The components snap into the position align. So we type here display format. The will be the display status line indicating that the component spacing and anchoring in relationship. So you can see here the align here and guidelines here. 
So we have seen that a while ago. Let's play warm up. So you notice it automatically aligns. To resize the J-Combo box, select the J-Combo bo combo box in the GUI builder, drag the resize handle of the J-Combo box right edge towards the right until the alignment guidelines appear, suggesting the preferred offset between the J-Combo box and J-Panel edges. As shown in the following illustration, next page, the J-Combo box right edge snaps into alignment with the J-Panel's recommended edge margin and the component's width, width is automatically set to resize with the form, so press Control S to save. So this will be the appearance. So we do that. We click here and then until. Oh, sorry, there's something wrong with my mouse. See, so press Control S to save the file. So we're now through with that part. And then. This is our target, so we also do these things. So we, we now try to do this on our own. Okay, so let's try. So maybe I'll be resizing this. And I'll be placing this here. Okay. Now I'll be leaving this to you, but first, how do we preview our form? So to preview our form, we can just click on this. Oh, what happened? Preview design, lesson preview the design. But we can, okay, let's just try to create a program to display. Let's say form or what's the name of the class? Contact Editor UI. So I went back to my main program. That's the, main, the name of the class. And then let's say F is equal to new Contact Editor UI. Open and close. So what we have done here is we created an object using the class that we have created and the class that we have created is actually the GUI form. And after that, f.set visible true. So that will make the form visible and that means that the form will now appear on our screen if we run the program. So we try to run the program. That's our form. Okay, so here's our combo box. So text field. Okay, so that ends my demo. Actually, uh, it's not yet over. I would like you to, on your own, try to add this and then just message me if you encounter problems in doing this. So thank you very much for listening to this video.